people do got the misconception that Coney Island is just this big amusement park. When tourists come to Coney Island, they don't go past um, the, ride, the rides. Once you cross that train, that Stillwell Avenue, once you cross Cropsey's Bridge, like, it's just a whole different world. People don't know it's community all together. We're about 55,000 residents. But to look where, you know, the struggle's at, it's right next to them. When they find out it is a community, you know, it's the violence, the gangs, the drugs. The first thing that comes to my mind when I think about Coney Island is the real fucking crazy shit. Like killings, robbery, stick-ups, smoking crack, shooting heroin in the staircases. For me, it's like Baghdad. It's like, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's a war zone. As bad as Times Square was, the armpit of the cesspool of crime, Coney Island was like who Ski holds, uh, the most vile, despicable thing you would ever want to scrape off of the bottom of your shoes. Just living in this building alone, I've seen people shot in front of me. We used to rob and run underneath the boardwalk. I was raped a few times under the boardwalk. It was dark and uh, it, was a lot of, it was like a maze down there. I was robbed several times under the boardwalk. Are there problems with Coney Island we all have to solve together? Yes. It was a horrible experience. The Parks Department didn't care about it, the city didn't care about it, but the residents of Coney Island, they cared about it. No one cares, it's Coney Island, no one cares. So it makes me care that much, that much more. Coney Island is so small, it's a little tiny peninsula, right? Width rise is about three or four blocks. Lift rise is about what, 30 blocks. And like everybody knows everybody's gossip and dirty laundry after September, but labor is gone. You know, everything shuts down. The wintertime Coney Island is desolate. There's nothing being done around here, nothing at all. And the big developers at that time just didn't set their sights on Coney Island. They're just trying to move everybody out, you know? That's not the way to do it. What are you gonna do with all of these poor black people? This is my passion because I have no choice. This is my home. I mean, you can't like push them any further because there's just ocean. My two feet are here and they're here to stay. And maybe they just don't wanna go. I've seen it. I've seen it come up and I've seen it go down. I've seen it with the best of Coney Island and I've seen it with the worst of Coney Island. During the bad times of Coney Island, as was evident throughout the city, there were gangs that were established. Coney Island was no exception. About 9 or 10, I started getting involved with gangs, maybe earlier. Children that if we don't step in to help them, they're going to be robbing people. And I'll tell you how that happens in Coney Island. They see themselves as the gang members only, and the young person who doesn't want to be a gang member and is trying to better himself, feels helpless. What are we gonna do? Until about 12, when I met Paulie, we started to become tight, and we formed this crew, or gang, or, or social networking. They existed. They were territorial, as gangs would be. I cleaned my block, 30th Street. I was literally in shootouts, sometimes twice a week. It was crazy. There were robberies. I was a hallway holdup kid. There were murders. One of my friend's sister was just shot in the head. And crime was rampant. They had basically laid siege to Coney Island, and this was AM hours, never mind the PM hours. At night, you don't know what's going on. When the sun went down, you just didn't want to be caught in that part of town. People getting killed. What was cool was somebody getting away with murder, literally killing somebody and never being charged for it. Some real things that you wouldn't, that you would picture in a movie not to happen in real life. Kids are not playing these days, man. They, they're, they're fucking around with guns, you know what I mean? And I guess I was doing the same thing back then, you know? Things haven't changed much. I don't mean to be so negative about it, but these are the things that I've grown up in Coney Island seeing. It, it shaped my life. It's definitely far from an amusement park story growing up here. I used to see the um the stickers up. He used to have stickers. He used to say TF on it. The same reason why I created TF is to help the oppressed. Everybody's trying to do the right thing here, but not necessarily the legal thing. I went to jail. The 
problem wasn't that the feds were overzealous. But the fact of the matter was probably the best thing of my life. The problem was Paulie and his friends kept committing crimes. There are people here in Coney Island that care so much for the people of Coney Island that they see their pain. They see their hurt. They're a part of it. I'm so thrilled he came almost 19 years ago to help us in Coney Island. Chuck Reichenthal. Working in Coney Island is a, one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. I see Coney Island in the future as a place where people live and enjoy everything that you can enjoy in a big city. It's not Manhattan. It's not 42nd Street that's been redeveloped. It's like no place else. It's totally unique and I see that remaining and I see it in the people and the activities that it's open to new ideas and constantly changing. We had one person in Coney Island, a guy named Crazy Jay, who decided to step up, he lives in the area, and organize the Guardian Angel Patrol. And we said, more power to you, but you gotta do the heavy lifting. You live there. You're in the muck and mire. You gotta deal with the flotsam and jetsam. You gotta set an example by picking up the trash, by going into the schools, by being a positive role model, by not dropping the F-bomb every five seconds. Sometimes my skin is a little tough because of the stuff I've seen, but I try not to let it get to me because uh, at the end of the night, you will cry like when you see these stories or when you get to know these people personally. I felt like if I would have stayed in Coney Island any longer, like it would have indirectly felt like just suicide. But little did they know, I couldn't. I'm trying to afford money to eat. I'm trying to afford to to keep my apartment. Like I'm in 11th grade. I'm raising my two little brothers now, who aren't that much younger than me. Like we're in school, and, and this is my reality. And People didn't get that. Some people want to bail when things get bad. Nah, I've been here when things been bad. Things ain't too good right now. But I want to be able to come back here and enjoy the good things instead of dealing with the things around that all the time. Getting old. 26. My mom died when she was 28. My cousin died when he was 28. What was their midlife? 15? 16? I'm pretty sure if I was raised on the east side of fucking Manhattan, it wouldn't be like that. I see the glass is half full rather than half empty. Coney Island to me now is what Coney Island will always be. It is my life, you know? I wouldn't want to grow up no other place in the world but Coney Island. Coney Island will always be Coney Island. The stories just don't get out. You get like these super survival instincts that you didn't even know. I want to get back, man. I want to be able to help the people of myself, you know. That's my hope for Coney Island, you know.